Everyone knows what this is. But have you seen that little clear marble come flying out the bottle? I'd like to show you some ink bottles and ink bottle packaging that I find interesting. This isn't a comprehensive list, otherwise the video would be way too long. But here are a few that make inking up my pen more fun. This past summer, Tassia came out with their lip color ink line of only pink colored inks. The short squat bottle was a fresh design. It kind of reminds me of the J. Urban bottles, but a little more sleek. And the whole labeling kept in line with kind of their makeup theme, which made this a fun bottle. The cylindrical bottle of Linen Toolbar's regular line of indigo inks is a fun bottle. But what takes it to the next level for their limited edition inks is the metal cap and the packaging. The metal cap is interesting and adds a fun vintage feel to the bottle. And the beautiful box and labels of Asian designs only adds to that. I like the square heavy bottom sailor bottles, but I particularly like Mount Fuji Sunrise. The beautiful color on Mount Fuji coordinates really well with the color of the ink. And the label wraps around only on one side. This style and color coordination makes this sailor bottle particularly nice. It's a collaboration between Ken Takeda and Bungukan Kobayashi. And I love inking up my pens in this. You don't really need an introduction to this bottle. Though it's universally familiar to all fountain pen users, it's still a beautiful and useful bottle. Other than that silly string, of course. Its heavy glass bottom with its divot and its heft make it a joy to ink up your pens with. I like the square bottles of Mont Blanc Special Edition inks, but this Meisterstück 90th anniversary bottle is a bit different. Both the box and the label on the bottle have this really old-fashioned kind of look to it. The label has muted colors and both the label and bottle have a kind of 1940s feel. It's a beautiful bottle. With Color Traveler, it's the packaging that's fun. It's a travel theme with a map on the outside. And the travel theme continues to the inside of the box where you have a bottle of ink. This one is bamboo green, a pretty light green. A little glass travel bottle. And a plastic pipette eyedropper thing to fill up your travel bottle. There's also some information and a sticker. This makes traveling with your fountain pens and ink a little more fun. Purely aesthetically, I like the Aurora bottle. It looks like it would fit right in to one of those diners in those shiny trailers where you could get an old fashioned milkshake. And the box coordinates real well with the label peeking through a cutout. Great bottle, great box, it makes it a winner. This is an ink called Kiboho made by Pen Saloon 2019. It's a bright blue iron gall ink. It's an interesting ink in that it's a bright blue even though it's iron gall and it takes a little while before it finally darkens down to a very dark blue. I like this bottle because it's kind of a light blue glass with this pink cap and it kind of reminds me of old timey medicine bottles. And I find that fitting since it is an iron gall ink. It would be hard to find another bottle that looks like this one. This bottle is so gorgeous that I don't even use the ink. I don't typically use black ink, but I like this bottle so much, I bought it just for the bottle. Rubinato has wax seal caps on all their inks. This one is particularly beautiful because it has a cameo on the top of the wax seal. 
So though I can't tell you what the ink's like, it looks really nice sitting on my desk. So I think that qualifies it as an interesting bottle. And speaking of wax caps, you really can't leave out J.R. Bond's Shimmering Ink 1670 series. Regardless of whether or not you like shimmering inks or you don't like the narrow opening, you've got to admit it's a beautiful bottle. The next one up I like for both the packaging and the bottle. It's Madozen's Athena series. The packaging looks like it's some sort of box from pre-war Japan. And the bottle continues with that vibe. It's a beautiful bottle with a sturdy, well-made cap. That pre-war effect is reinforced by the Japanese being written from right to left, even though it's horizontal, just like they used to. It's one of my very favorite bottles. Packaging is the real star in Tassia's Yukioe inks. The bottles are kind of average, but the boxes are beautiful. The box has a print of a Yukioe. Inside each box of ink is a little leaflet that shows all the different Yukioes in their series. The inks are wonderful blue, easy to write with colors, but the boxes still the show. You'd be hard pressed to do an ink bottle video without including Ackerman. The first time I saw an Ackerman bottle, I thought of Lamine. Lamine is a Japanese soft drink in which you have to balance the glass marble between the neck and your mouth so you can drink it. But if you tilt your head too far back, the marble stops up the opening of the bottle. The first time that I tried pouring ink out of an Ackerman bottle, I had assumed it was like a Lamine bottle. But it's not, and the marble came flying out. Though most Ackerman bottles have, there it goes, Though most Ackerman bottles have more ink than you could possibly use, they're such an iconic bottle that they're nice to have one. You don't see this next ink talked about very much. It's Stipula's Kalamo ink. One of the reasons I like this bottle is because of the dark colored glass. It has a sturdy, well-made cap with a kind of textured writing on top and a very wide mouth for easy filling. And it holds a lot of ink. All of this combines together to make a really beautiful bottle that looks like it belongs in an apothecary. Next up is eye paper inks. And what makes this series fun is both their bottles and their packaging. Their bottles are interesting shapes and their packaging is always brightly colored different kinds of art on a kind of like cardstock paper. This is Taiwan Mogi Tree Frog ink and note its slight triangular shape. And this is the box that it comes in. This is Bellflower ink and like normal boxes of ink, you want to try to open it from the top, but you can't. You need to open the box from the bottom because of the triangular shape. I always forget to do this. And here you see all the labels show through cutouts in the boxes and they match perfectly. This ink is Matsu and as you can see, it's a different kind of bottle and box. The bottle's more squat, where still it's wider at the bottom than at the top. But the interesting thing is the box. It's not glued together. You can take it completely apart and then put it back together again. Hopefully these inks will become more widely available because they really have interesting bottles and packaging. If you like the Japanese alcoholic beverage sake, then you'll like this next ink. This title is a long one. It's Kawasaki Shoten, which is the name of the company and the name of the pen store. They're Imperial Shikishima ink, and it's made by the Ink Baron. It comes nestled in a wooden sake cup with some straw inside. It's a real sake cup, and you can crack open a bottle and drink some. It's a round, wide-mouthed squat bottle, and it's a nice, pretty dark green. 
you've got to admit, this is some pretty interesting packaging. The company Mita San Shodo has been going hard and heavy with their Edo Kiriko cut glass bottles. At Bungu Joshi Haku, which is the large stationery show that happened a couple months ago, Mita was selling empty bottles and a whole variety of ink colors, most of them scented. The cap on this is so-so, but then you can buy a brass cap to replace it. This ink proved to be very popular at the stationery show, I think mainly because it kind of looks like a perfume bottle, and I think they sent the inks to kind of ride on that. But in any case, it is a beautiful bottle. Bungu Box's line of Ink Tells More ink has interesting bottles and boxes. The bottle has the same concept as a Mont Blanc bottle where you can pour the ink toward the front end of the bottle so you can get the last drop. Kaoru-san from Bungu Box said it was made to look like a high heel. She was also very careful to tell me to open the box along the perforations and not like a normal box from the top. That way you open the box as if it was a lighter. This is a beautiful, useful bottle of ink, and they get extra points for being so imaginative with the packaging. These are inks from Kakimori. There's nothing really special about the bottle or the inks. It's the coordination that I really appreciate. They come packaged three into a box. And this is the box. It's kind of a muted gray green. What I found interesting about it is the choice of these muted colors that go really well together and it goes really well with the box. These are a special edition set that you can buy at the Ginza 6 Staya bookstore. I appreciate that Kakimori and Ginza 6 took the time to make coordinated inks with coordinated packaging that look really well together. And lastly, I'd like to talk about these sample bottles. This sample bottle of Shizuoka Cha or Shizuoka Green Tea came with my Shizuoka Cha pen. It's a sample size of that tea green ink. More and more Japanese companies are selling these sample sizes of ink. You can buy empty bottles made by Tamiya and just peel off the sticker and then you could just store your sample size vials of ink in these glass bottles instead. They're more sturdy than the plastic vials and are much more attractive to look at. Here's the sizes compared to my hand. It would be nice if we could buy sample size bottles of ink from all different companies with this glass bottle instead of the plastic vials. These are just some of my favorite ink bottles and packaging. If you've got a favorite, please let me know in the comments. If you like this video, I'd appreciate a like and a subscribe. I post stationary and Asia related videos every Friday night, Tokyo time.